We've got my notes. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just going to enjoy these milk and cookies while you go over the notes. Welcome to Simply Made Fancy. I'm Ruth Angelina, and this is my better half. <laughs> I'm Maurice, Simply Made Fancy husband. I'm the one behind the scenes making sure that everything that you see uh, turns out okay. Hopefully, I've been doing a good job. Sometimes. <laughs> In this video, we are going to talk about how we do Halloween as a Christian family in our home. And the reason we decided to do this video is because we noticed that there aren't many videos <clears throat> on YouTube that talk specifically about how a Christian family uh, goes about celebrating Halloween and I think we just wanted to be a little bit more simple and kind of elaborate on what we do as a family um, around Halloween. Because Halloween is part of who we are, I guess you can say that. Because, I mean, it, the, how we grew up here in like the Western culture, it's kind of, you know, you say what you will about the commercialism or whatever, like candy industry and all that. Yeah. But it is like a fun holiday a fun day to celebrate or just participate in also throughout the time that i've been doing some instagram stories people have been asking me questions because they know that i'm a christian and they've been wondering you know why aren't my kids dressed up or why did i make you know halloween cookies so i've been messaging back and forth with a couple of people and everybody's been so gracious and you know wanting to know more about how we do Halloween in our house and how we kind of navigate through the, that world as a Christian family. So a couple of disclaimers. Yes. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're not going to be definitive in anything that we say. Like we're not going to be going to, this is not to convince you to be completely against celebrating Halloween as a Christian family. And this is not going to be convincing you why you should. Uh, everyone has their own conviction uh, when it comes to this topic, when it comes to celebrating uh, a holiday that really has very uh, interesting, very colorful uh, origin and roots. Um, but at the same time, we'll, we'll get into why we do and without having to alienate anybody, whether you decide to, whether you're watching this and you don't agree with us or you agree with us or you're in the middle and this video helps you um that's really all it's about but we don't want anyone to feel uh like we're going one side or the other or alienating anyone this is just our take on it as a family of faith and uh and you know that's basically it yeah we fall kind of like right in the middle i would say yeah. of um halloween festivities or whatever you want to call it um we don't completely not do anything that's not where we're at and we don't judge anybody for whether they celebrate or not um and we're not on the other spectrum where we go all out and we have all the ghosts and things like that so we're kind of right in the middle and that's where what we want to share right so we actually have some notes so we're a little bit prepared. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to go right down this list and hopefully you'll get some value out of this discussion. All right. So how did you celebrate Halloween or what did you do as a kid? I mean, as a kid, I just remember in the 80s, uh, Halloween costumes were not that great. It was not the equivalent of wearing a plastic garbage bag and a really horrible mask with a really bad elastic that would break or snap and hurt you. So um, to me, Halloween, like, you know, my parents, uh, they came from another country. You know, my dad came from the Dominican Republic. My mom came from Ecuador. Halloween wasn't really something that they were that familiar with. 
but uh, going to a school in and public school and you know having our school participate in like the Halloween parade and all that stuff um, they quickly kind of realized well this is something that's for the kids mm -hmm. and um, I really didn't trick-or-treat I lived in an apartment building but my dad was the super so like everybody in the building knew me so I would trick-or-treat in the building and it was a lot of like older people that uh, kind of found it refreshing that a kid was like trick-or-treating in their <laughs> building because it was a, it, it was, at the time the building was like predominantly older white people so uh, I would just I would get a lot of little bags of candy and little bags of coin of change and coins and things like that um, as I got older I kind of because the 80s were such a like a weird time to be a kid like I feel like in the 80s there was a lot more liberties like a lot of the movies in the early 90s yeah a lot of the movies that we watched were questionable to today's standards as far as movies that kids should be watching and you know there was like the Friday the 13th and Freddy Cougar and all that so I, as I got older I kind of wanted to do more of like horror stuff like I remember one year I wanted to be Freddy Cougar for Halloween and and like my parents let me like they you know they kind of just knew that it was like for kids and pretend and it wasn't until later on that we got really serious about our faith uh my parents like we started going to church and learning more about god and the bible that without my parents being too strict it just kind of we just kind of like stopped doing it and like my younger brother he would dress up like for the school stuff but then as he got older it didn't really wasn't a big thing it ended up becoming more of like a if you got invited to a costume party around Halloween, then all right, you know, let's do it. You know, like when we were dating, we got invited to a costume party and we went. No. But that was like the extent. I never took it too seriously, but I never ignored it mm -hmm. either. And the, lastly, I'll say, um, when I was growing, when I was younger, the church that we went to at that time, uh, I remember one year we did do like kind of like a Halloween harvesty thing at the church where we, uh, uh, like there were clowns and, you know, like, you know, it was like fun stuff to do in lieu of being outside and, and walking around the neighborhood because <clears throat> like you also had to be careful. Like the 80s and 90s, you know, uh, I think there was a lot more, uh, there was less regulation as far as curfews and, and stuff like that. And there were a lot more like, you know, kids doing bad things on that night and egging houses and egging people and, you know, gang related stuff. And it was New York in the 80s and 90s, not the safest place. Mm. So, so that, that was my Halloween growing up. Well, for me, it was a little bit similar, but just with a couple of differences. Um, I remember one of the, one of my first memories of Halloween was me dressed up like, I think it, it was like a Mickey Mouse or, or like a little mouse. And I, I believe I have the picture in one of my photo albums. So I remember that. I remember, you know, my parents as well are, you know, I came, immigrated from the uh, Dominican Republic, so I'm a first generation, born and raised in New York City, and my parents acclimated very quickly to the culture, and so we did celebrate, to some extent, uh, Halloween. I remember going to, like, house parties with, you know, my, the kids from, like, my cousins, and friends and close friends and they would just do a little party not really trick-or-treating we didn't really do much of that um and sometimes we would do trick-or-treating in our building when i was a little bit older um, with my brothers we did do some trick-or-treating in our building and it was basically again just there weren't many kids in the building so we would just go around and the older you know generation which was predominantly uh spanish and irish actually <laughs> would have little candies for us and things like that so it was it was a nice thing to do and a lot of the kids that went were always related to me somehow in some way so it was like a big family thing anyway so we did do some of that and we did dress up later on again just like Maurice's family my family got really serious with the things of God and you know we started going to church and we started just getting involved more in that aspect so my parents kind of like you just Halloween didn't become you know a thing anymore but because we loved dressing up in my house my brothers and I we would still dress up on Halloween 
even though we didn't go anywhere <laughs> we would dress up in our house and we would eat milk and cookies or whatever maybe watch like one of the halloween cartoons like charlie brown or something like that and that's what we would do we wouldn't really go out so it was great and you know we kind of did that on the down low i guess <laughs> so that was like our little version of celebrating halloween without really participating in all the gory stuff that was going out there and it was a safer way also because i lived in the city and in the city is a whole lo other level especially in the 80s and the 90s of things that that were that were going on so that was about it and i do remember one year and i'll share this and this comes into just how your conviction and how far you go with you know celebrating halloween or not um when i was in college my best friend and I decided to go to an 80s Halloween party at some kind of like lounge thing that we found out about it. Of course, I wanted to dress up like Madonna. Well, we both dressed up like Madonna. She dressed up like uh, Madonna with like the wedding bride thing. And I, I think I was like the Vogue Madonna. I don't know, whatever. So we, of course, wanted to go. And you can't pass up an 80s dress up party on Halloween day so we went and we had a good time and it was fun we danced and everything but then came the ugh, like that feeling like I'm not supposed to be there here I wasn't supposed to be here and that's when I knew that that was where kind of like my line was drawn with Halloween like I didn't want to feel like that I felt like, I wasn't doing the right thing. Yeah. And, you know, I wasn't dressed appropriately because, let's face it. It's Madonna. <laughs> it's Madonna. And, you know, that is a little bit more sexualized. Right, right. And it takes Halloween to another level where I didn't feel comfortable. And that definitely is something that I didn't want to do. And I didn't feel like I was celebrating and being happy and joyous. I felt like, you know, I wasn't pleasing to... Um, to the things of God and what I believed. Yeah, and so. I think that's, that's I guess, where the line gets drawn, where, uh, you know, the aspect of Halloween that is traditionally kids dressing up, walking around their neighborhood with their parents and families and going door to door and getting candy right. and stuff like that. Like, that's the aspect of Halloween that I think we are okay with. I think the problem lies in that Halloween the adult side of Halloween is kind of not so wholesome. And, yeah. you know, it's almost like a, you know, it's like a, people use it as almost like an excuse to kind of very, dress very inappropriately. And, uh, you know, and I get it, you know, like in the kind of like Comic Con world of cosplay, mm -hmm. like, you know, people, people dress up and people uh, wanna, you know, it's like, it's not every day you can dress up like Darth Vader or, you know, or Princess Leia or whatever. Um, Which, and, by the way, I will be Princess Leia this <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> but it's, but then it's like, you know, but then it's like, you got to take it a little bit too far. And then you get yeah. the costumes that are a little bit more elaborate or more, uh, you know, uh, inappropriate, I would say. And that's where, that's the side of Halloween that we kind of stay clear of. Yes. So, um... Where are we? So, yes. Yeah. So then that's our background story of Halloween mm -hmm. and how, you know, we celebrated as a kid. And now, seven years ago, we have our first baby, Logan Kent. <laughs> I, was, I was in charge of the middle names, so Kent, because I'm a big Superman fan. <laughs> so, yeah. So we have this baby and... um what do we do we want to you know embrace a lot of the first that you get to have with your right. your firstborn right and he was born in the summer so you know halloween was right around, right the, around corner, the corner pretty pretty much after he was born so we kind of had to face you know a decision like what are we going to do with halloween you know like as a family as like, a family now that, like, we're, now that we're a family a brand new family like how how are we going to like what's going to be our kind of like stance on it that you know, like some some of you may be watching this video because you're looking for 
an idea of like, okay, maybe you're a new family. Like how, how do you come to this decision? Well, this is, this was how we came to that decision. We, as you heard, we, Halloween was part of our childhood. Uh, you know, growing up, watching movies right. and TV, you kind of had an idea that of Halloween as like that wholesome thing, but you also knew the dark side. But now as a new family, we kind of had to come to that decision of how are we going to celebrate as a family moving forward now that we have kids? Right. And, you know, so one of the things that, you know, you, we could have just not done anything and, you know, been like, okay, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to dress up. We're not yeah. going to have candy. We're not going to, you know, open our doors or welcome trick-or-treaters. What That could have been our, you know, choice. Or we could have like embraced it and done everything under the sun that you can probably think of right. of Halloween. But we took a little bit of a different approach because we didn't just not want to do anything. We wanted to do something to almost kind of reclaim or just have right. have an idea of what to do with our son and how to teach him and, and not to just alienate this one day of the year right. because it has some kind of you know background that is you know just very shady <laughs> so right and and the good thing is that because when you're a brand new parent those first couple of years they're not going to remember anyway so we, you, <laughs> you get to experiment a little bit with what you want to do what you what you do what you don't do and and we also we lived in an apartment yeah. building so uh, again uh you're you're, you end up being a little bit limited. I think when you live in a house in a neighborhood, there's also that added pressure of everybody in the neighborhood is right. the, people are trick or treating, people are putting their candy out, and you don't want to be like that only house that, you know, they're like hiding behind and no candy in the front, you know. Um, so it's different in an apartment building. So it was we had a little, we had it a little bit easier in that sense. Right. So for that first Halloween, I think we just, we had our friends over mm -hmm. um, that came to visit from out of town and they also had their little one and we went to the mall. Right. Um, we didn't really dress up the kids. They were just like with little orange yeah. pumpkin-y type clothes and yeah. we went because we wanted them to look at the costumes, at the yeah. kids walking yeah. around and all that stuff. So that's kind of where we... Uh, yeah. started like for the kids to kind of see what's going on it's cute to see little princesses and little you know superheroes right. and i just think is the most cutest thing in the world and it also became a time that i think uh, the best thing about it is just that it was a family time it was something that we were doing together spending more time together and it's october 31st it's the last day of the month that signals the coming of the holiday season right so what a great start to start off you know to end that fall season with you know just family it's, enjoying yeah. celebrating and welcoming that new um season where thanksgiving is coming christmas mm -hmm. um my birthday and then <laughs> new year's yeah. so i think that's why we kind of like felt like it was cool and just an appropriate thing to yeah. do because it was more about family time and spending time with family especially because we had our very best friends at that you know time with us yeah and they had a baby that was the same age as our logan so it, it, it was it was really special but also i had to say i mean for it was tw 2012 and that's when New York got hit with hurricane sandy so we were limited also which with, with where to go yeah. but on the flip side, you mentioned, you know, we did go to the mall. You know, we live in a time now where there's a lot more opportunities for families and kids to uh, celebrate Halloween in other ways. You know, there's a lot of harvest festivals and there's a lot of, you know, like indoor malls and outdoor malls. They will have, you know, some there are kinds of harvesty events. And it's interesting because there's there's a lot more mentioning of harvest party or fall festival more so than halloween like halloween right. is like halloween night and then all around it before and after you have all these harvest fall things that you can do that your kids could dress up they can go and they right. get people give them treats and stuff like that so i think right now we live in a time where it's actually a lot easier to embrace 
Halloween, even as a Christian, because right. it's an opportunity to be out and about with your family, like my wife said, being together, and also being around other people and being a light wherever you go, you know? Yeah, and I think that that's also one of the things that we wanted to do is extend that, you know, love to others, especially on this day where, you know, we can have the opportunity to show our light, to show God in sharing time with others that we would not normally even have time to do that right with. it's so. it's it's one of the few times in the year where people come to your house like you have strangers that will knock on your door and you get to open your door and um and, you know and, and share a couple of minutes with them a couple moments with them yeah. and, and you know we actually what we did when um you know once we moved out of the apartment and we moved here which is you know a nice little neighborhood and there's a little townhouses so it's a little bit you know more access to the outdoors we actually had like some of the neighbors kids and stuff like that that would come in yeah and we would spend a couple minutes here take some pictures you know and and, it, and be able to interact with the parents and it's also a great way for a fan uh, us as a new family yeah. to meet other families and create relationships because we live in such a busy world where we're so busy with everything that we're so and we're so focused on ourselves mm -hmm that sometimes it's hard to even meet other people and right. be able to develop friendships. So this is a great way also to meet people. <laughs> and just to add to that, the first year that we moved to this area, um, that year during the ha Halloween season, we did little invitation cards because we knew that we don't have a lot of kids also. Now there's more families moving in, but when we first moved in there wasn't that many mm -hmm. families that had kids as well so what we did was just we did little invitations to our neighbors with kids and we left those little invitations and said please stop by for you know from this time to this time at our house we would love to you know treat you to cupcakes apple cider and it was awesome we had just moved in so we didn't know a lot of our neighbors right. and they came and we had Bible verses um, and pumpkins. We had like uh, little signs that says, um, you know, like Jesus is the light and, you know, don't fear because God is with me. Things like that, right. which was great because the, the kids came in. It wasn't a scary situation for them. It was just a happy place. And, you know, I made cupcakes, cookies. They had apple cider and we had a couple like little dances and little games for the kids and it was only for like a little while mm -hmm. and that developed into some friendships that we still have with some of our neighbors and we've had some of them move away that we are still you know in contact with because of that one you know event that yeah. we were able to open our doors and say come in spend some time with us our boys were very little so we weren't going to go out trick-or-treating or doing all that stuff but we were able to do that to open our home and, you know, develop some friendships. Yeah. And it's and I guess that's at the end of the day, um, as, a, as a Christian family, you know, you always want to find opportunities. To, yeah. I mean, in general, as a Christian, you want to find opportunities um, to be to leave a good mark on somebody right. to to be able to kind of plant seeds of 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 joy and of peace. And, and you know, we're supposed to be peacekeepers. We're supposed to be uh people that uh have joy because you know and 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 be able to share that and it's a great opportunity around this time like i said before that we are able to you're able to invite people in or or just or meet them at the door and and just have a couple of moments with them and and um be it be the difference people that are out there with their cute kids dressing up they're not thinking about you know the origins of halloween and mm -hmm. and the goriness they just want their little kids to walk around in these cute little costumes and have somebody smile at them yeah. you know and say oh you look cute today or this is a great costume and you know those kids are like beaming all the time when yeah. they're dressed up with, with costumes i mean my son dylan has been wearing his power ranger costume for about a week now almost yeah. every day and he wants to go to the store pick up you know his brothers at school with his costume and he loves it when people say yeah. oh how cute look at that power ranger so you know i think you know we can just share yeah. that love halloween is 
the other side of Halloween is, you know, about the darkness and about, you know, evil stuff. But that's a great opportunity to share with your kids that it's also a time to remember that there's one, there's, we believe in a God that conquered evil yeah. and conquers uh, the and darkness. Conquers death, yeah. And, and, you know, in the darkness, there's light, you know, and it's cool because you have fall that leads right into Thanksgiving mm -hmm. that then leads to Christmas. So it's, it's a, it's a great transition of, you know, uh, you know, the darkness and it gets, and in the fall it gets darker earlier. Yeah. And then you have a time of Thanksgiving where you can give thanks for the things that you have and everything. And then you have Christmas, which is about the gift, the gift of life and the, and the gift of, and you know, and all that stuff. So, um, I, you know, that's basically, uh, why we as a Christian family mm -hmm. embrace Halloween, uh, not, it's baggage. So there was a really great quote that I that basically talked about how uh, just because the origin of something is bad, you don't have to uh, focus on it. You don't ignore it, but you don't focus on it mm -hmm. because anything anything that could be that started off bad doesn't mean it's not redeemable. Right. And I think that's really the key to Halloween as a believer, as a Christian, is redeeming it to become something that's you know, let's redefine it. Right. That it's about family and it's ultimately about the kids. You know, our church has been doing a harvest festival yeah. every Halloween for I don't know how many years. Uh, we've only been at the church for about two, three, two, three two, years. Three years. So this will be our third this is year, our third year yeah. going to the Halloween festival. And it's been a great opportunity as well to invite our neighbors to go my son's friends at school to go and different people that you know just want to do something with their kids but they don't know what to do um i have other friends that are christians and go to churches that don't host you know harvest festivals but i was able to invite them and they're gonna come to the harvest festival and enjoy it because their kids just want candy and want to have fun yeah. so and that's a way that our church does the Harvest Festival as a ministry to bring other people out there, you know, to embrace them and love on them and teach them about God. And, you know, we have their children there. They're having fun. Mm -hmm. They get a message of love. And they have fun. I mean, they just have a great time. And that's a great, you know, just testimony of, yeah. you know, how God, you know, can, like Marie said, redeem right. this holiday and make it for him and not for what it really is yeah and it's practical too because uh, you know uh, at least here on the east coast you know it starts to get a little cold out yeah we have some rain it's like a little bit rainy and stuff and and sometimes frankly as you know parents like you, you don't want to have to walk around the neighborhood <laughs> and to go trick-or-treating and to go somewhere where it's indoor and they have bouncy house bouncy castles and uh face painting and all kinds of fun booths that they can try out, play games and like, you know, get candy. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's great. So what are we doing this year for Halloween? And our family this year is going to have some of our neighbors come after school. You know, I've already talked to some of the moms out there and we've made cookies, these cute little cookies with like little sayings and, my boys have helped to decorate, you know, some of the areas in our house and Star Wars is a big thing here. So they wanted to decorate a little section of the house with Halloween Star Wars, Star Wars. decor. Special plug, uh, shout out to <laughs> Jedi Toy Masters here on YouTube. Make sure you check it out. <laughs> and um, also we have little signs and little verses for our goodie bags, I mean, let's not go cheap. We don't want to go cheap on the kids right. that are coming to get candy. We try yeah. to like make big goodie bags with a bunch of stuff that they can grab. And we always put some kind of um, verse or something meaningful that they can take away. Maybe it could be like this year we're doing little, um, little crafts that we're putting that have like talk about fall and have a little verse. And, the, and that's going to go in the goodie bag with all the other candy and other stuff in yeah. there so you know be welcoming and the kids will be coming back and yeah and again it's a, it's about you know having fun 
family, kids, fun, yeah. and being a light, being, being, you know, you know, spreading that right. love. So that's pretty, that's basically that's it. That's basically it. So how, uh, let's ask a question. Like how do, um, if you're watching this, you know, how do you celebrate Halloween? What, what, uh, special Halloween traditions do you have? Let us know in the comments below because we would love mm -hmm. to, we would love to know. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe and you subscribe to this lovely lady right here simply made <laughs> fancy check out some of the other videos that she has on this channel because they're awesome i hear the person that edits them is really <laughs> handsome <Okay. laughs> and that's about it thank you for watching make sure you like and subscribe and comment below let us know and we'll see you or she will see you in the next video